One of the greatest mysteries of human paleontology in 2025 is, why haven't we discovered more Denisovan fossils in Asia? Do we need to re-examine the existing fossil record to consider alternative possibilities? Southeast Asia has one of the world's most extensive fossil records documenting human evolution. Some of these fossils date back at least 1.5 million years, so this is not an evolutionary backwater. These tropical islands were once home to a variety of ancient humans, as evidenced by fossil discoveries. A groundbreaking study titled Multiple Deeply Divergent Denisovan Ancestries in Papuans revealed three distinct Denisovan genetic lineages, which they labelled D0, D1 and D2, in modern Papuan genomes, each with different divergence times. These lineages provide clues about the sequence of Denisovan migrations and interactions with other human populations. This study suggests a complex Denisovan migration history, with multiple waves of dispersal and interaction over hundreds of thousands of years. The overlapping presence of D0, D1 and D2 lineages in Papuan genomes highlights long-term coexistence and admixture between Denisovans and early modern humans in Southeast Asia and Papua and Australia. Now, in a reinterpretation of early human evolution, scientists have proposed the classification of Homo soloensis, a hominin species representing the ancient Denisovan D2 lineage. This designation is based on extensive genetic evidence and fossil finds, including the famous Solo Man fossils from Java, Indonesia. The research also identifies a subspecies of Homo soloensis, named Homo soloensis papuensis, which represents the D1 lineage. This subspecies contributed significantly to the genomes of modern Papuans and Australian Aboriginal populations. Meanwhile, the D0 lineage in East Asia, which is closest to the Denisovans from Denisova Cave in Siberia, has been classified under the distinct species Homo juluensis by another study, highlighting its origins in Central Asia. The D0 lineage, Homo juluensis, is closely related to the Altai Denisovans and remained localized to Central Asia and China, and close to the Denisova cave region. This new framework reflects the genetic diversity and geographic spread of Denisovan populations, emphasizing their complexity and importance in understanding human evolution. It challenges the oversimplified use of the term Denisovan to describe what is now known to be a group of diverse and regionally distinct archaic human populations. Genetic and fossil evidence have revealed that the term Denisovan has been used too broadly, encompassing several deeply divergent lineages with distinct evolutionary histories and geographic ranges. One of the key aspects of this reclassification is the recommendation to restrict the term Denisovan solely to the hominins associated with Denisova Cave in the Altai Mountains of Siberia. The lineage associated with Denisova Cave is now classified as Homo juluensis, according to the study. It represents a population localized to Central Asia, while other Denisovan lineages, such as those represented by Homo soloensis and Homo soloensis papuensis, reflect independent evolutionary histories in South Asia, Sunderland, and Sahul. By refining the use of Denisovan, scientists aim to create a clearer understanding of archaic human populations across Asia. This distinction emphasizes the need for more precise terminology that reflects the regional and genetic differences within these populations. The name Homo soloensis carries a long and complex history within the field of anthropology. It was originally proposed in the 1930s to describe the Solo Man fossils discovered along the Solo River in Java, Indonesia. These fossils, dating to approximately 100,000 to 150,000 years ago, were initially interpreted as representing a transitional stage between archaic humans and modern Homo sapiens. However, during much of the 20th century, the significance of these fossils was diminished by debates among Western anthropologists, especially those in England and the United States, who treated them as a late variant of Homo erectus rather than a distinct species. Some even referred to this group as tropical Neanderthals. The discovery of the Soloman fossils, which are now central to the classification of Homo soloensis, was made by a Dutch paleoanthropologist named Ralph von Koenigswald. 
Von Königswald led excavations along the Solo River, where he unearthed a dozen hominin skulls and skeletal fragments. These fossils exhibited distinct characteristics that set them apart from both Homo erectus and modern humans, including a robust cranial structure with a prominent brow ridge but larger brain capacity compared to Homo erectus. Von Königswald originally proposed the name Homo soloensis for these fossils to reflect their geographic origin near the Solo River. His classification was part of his broader work in Southeast Asia, where he studied the evolution of hominins, including the famous Homo erectus fossils from Java, known as Java Man. Von Königswald's efforts to highlight the distinctiveness of Solo Man marked an early recognition of the diversity within archaic human populations in Asia. Despite his pioneering work, the classification of Solo Man as Homo soloensis was met with skepticism by Western anthropologists at the time, many of whom considered the fossils to be late surviving Homo erectus. For decades, the species' name fell into disuse, overshadowed by debates centered on hominins from Europe and Africa. However, recent genetic and fossil studies have revived Homo soloensis as a distinct species, validating von Königswald's original insights and emphasizing the importance of his discoveries in understanding human evolution. The long-standing tendency of Western anthropologists to prioritize European and African fossils, especially Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, over Asian fossils, has led to misunderstandings about the evolutionary significance of Asian hominins. Fossils like those of Solo Man have often been overlooked or dismissed in favor of narratives centered on Europe and Africa. The revival of the name Homo soloensis not only honors the historical significance of these fossils, but also acknowledges the importance of Asia as a critical center of human evolution. This timeline and geographic pattern align with genetic evidence and the timing of Denisovan contributions to modern human populations, highlighting their role as an important but widely dispersed archaic human lineage. In fact, the split times between the different Denisovan lineages suggest they would have had as much genetic variation as that seen between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, further emphasizing their unique lineages. The evolutionary history of Denisovans reflects their complex relationships with Neanderthals and modern humans. Denisovans and Neanderthals split from a common ancestor shared with Homo sapiens around 700,000 to 800,000 years ago. This ancestor, likely a late form of Homo erectus, migrated out of Africa and settled in Eurasia over a million years ago. While modern humans evolved in Africa, Denisovans and Neanderthals diverged and adapted to different regions of Eurasia. Meanwhile, the split between Denisovans and Neanderthals occurred approximately 470,000 to 360,000 years ago. Neanderthals migrated westward into Europe and the Middle East, while Denisovans expanded eastward into Central Asia, South Asia, and beyond. Within the Denisovan population, the three lineages, D0, D1, and D2, represent further divergence over time. The D2 lineage, Homo soloensis, represents the earliest split within Denisovans, occurring around 363,000 years ago. This lineage expanded into South Asia and Southeast Asia, where it became distinct from other Denisovan populations. The D1 lineage, classified as Homo soloensis papuensis, diverged around 283,000 years ago and reflects a later migration into Papua and Australia. Enigmatic fossils from Australia such as the Coe Swamp Skull and others may represent a mixture between modern humans and this group. The D2 lineage displaced the older and more well-known Java man, Homo erectus, who had inhabited the region since at least 1.5 million years ago. This suggests that Homo soloensis emerged as a dominant archaic human population in Southeast Asia, adapting to tropical and subtropical environments while outcompeting earlier hominin species. The arrival of Homo soloensis around 300,000 years ago marked a significant evolutionary and ecological shift in the region as it replaced one of the longest surviving hominin species in history. The recognition of Homo soloensis and Homo juluensis as distinct species reflects a shift toward embracing our shared human ancestry and moving beyond outdated narratives. 
By incorporating Asian perspectives and honoring species names rooted in local discoveries, scientists are advancing a more balanced understanding of human evolution. The story of human evolution is not solely the product of migrations from Africa to Europe, but a complex, interconnected process involving multiple regions and populations. Asia, with its rich fossil record and genetic legacy, played a central role in shaping the mosaic of modern humanity. By adopting a global perspective, researchers are creating a more accurate account of our shared evolutionary history. The study of human evolution has long been influenced by Western perspectives that underestimated the significance of Asian hominin populations. Many Asian human species, including Homo soloensis and Homo juluensis, have been relegated to secondary status or dismissed as regional variants of better-known groups like Homo erectus. This approach has failed to recognize the unique evolutionary pathways and adaptations that these species represent. The reclassification of Homo soloensis and Homo soloensis papuensis challenges this outdated narrative, emphasizing the need for a broader, more inclusive understanding of human evolution. Accepting species names rooted in local discoveries rather than imposing Western frameworks reflects a more balanced approach that values the contributions of Asian researchers and fossil sites. This shift recognizes that human evolution was a global process, with Asia playing a pivotal role in shaping archaic and modern human populations. Based on what we know about Denisovans and their genetic and archaeological footprint, their migrations likely followed pathways that leveraged their adaptability to diverse environments, including mountains, river systems, and forests. Denisovans were highly flexible in their geographic preferences, as evidenced by their presence in Siberia, Denisova Cave, high-altitude regions like the Tibetan Plateau and Southeast Asia. As mentioned, Denisovans likely originated in Central Asia as an offshoot of early archaic humans, perhaps late Homo erectus, such as that represented by the Yonxian fossils from China. From that point of origin, they migrated eastward and southward. The Altai Mountains, including Denisova Cave, served as an important early settlement due to its rich resources, caves for shelter, and strategic location near river systems. Denisovans likely moved eastward into what is now China, taking advantage of fertile lowlands, forests, and river valleys. Fossil evidence such as the Jiahe Mandible, Tibetan Plateau, and genetic traces in East Asian populations also suggests Denisovans adapted to high altitudes. A Denisovan-like tooth found in Laos indicates their presence in Southeast Asia and is currently the only fossil evidence of Denisovans in that region. Genetic evidence in Papuans and Aboriginal Australians suggests Denisovans migrated southward into Southeast Asia. These migrations likely followed forested corridors along river systems and coastal routes, avoiding deserts and harsh mountain regions. Denisovans would have been present in Sundaland, the now submerged landmass connecting Southeast Asia, and contributed genetic material to populations in the region. Denisovan populations contributed significant genetic material to modern populations in Papua New Guinea and Australia, a landmass known as Sahul, suggesting they reached these regions or interbred with populations that did. This implies a potential maritime expansion or interaction with early modern humans who carried Denisovan DNA into Sahul. The new classifications of Homo soloensis and Homo juluensis align with the new shuttle dispersal model of human evolution, which proposes that human evolution involved multiple waves of migration, interaction, and genetic exchange among archaic human populations across vast geographic regions. This model moves beyond the simple out-of-Africa framework, emphasizing the complexity and interconnectedness of human evolution. The shuttle dispersal model highlights the multiple origins and regional adaptations in archaic human populations. Instead of a single, linear migration from Africa, this model suggests that populations including Homo soloensis and Homo juluensis repeatedly migrated and adapted to new environments over time. For example, Homo soloensis likely originated in South Asia and expanded into Southeast Asia, thriving in tropical and subtropical environments. In contrast, Homo juluensis represents a lineage that remained localized in Central and East Asia, 
where it adapted to colder climates and mountainous regions. The model also emphasizes the extensive gene flow between archaic human populations, as evidenced by Denisovan genetic contributions to modern human genomes in East Asia, Papua and Australia. The D1 lineage, Homo soloensis papuensis, reflects how subspecies expanded and interbred with migrating Homo sapiens, shaping the genetics of modern populations in Papua New Guinea and Australia. Regional adaptations are a central feature of the shuttle dispersal model. Homo soloensis and Homo juluensis adapted to a wide range of environments, from the high-altitude Tibetan plateau to the tropical lowlands of Southeast Asia. These adaptations highlight the flexibility and resilience of archaic human populations in diverse ecological settings. By recognizing the complexity of human evolution and the interconnectedness of archaic populations, the shuttle dispersal model provides a more accurate framework for understanding the dynamic processes that shaped human history. Lastly, the known fossils of Homo erectus, Homo floresiensis, and Homo luzonensis may appear to be in the right place and time to represent the mysterious tropical Denisovans. However, their ancestors were present in island Southeast Asia by one million years ago, so they are too ancient to represent the Denisovans, who arrived only 300,000 years ago or so. The next major discovery could be fossil evidence of the Denisovans on remote Indonesian islands, Papua New Guinea or Australia. Caves are particularly good at preserving fossils, so the islands of Sumatra, Borneo and Sulawesi may be the best places to look for physical evidence of the enigmatic tropical Denisovans. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments.